Okay, we're going to look at the cat today, and uh, this was requested by, by one of the, uh, the students in your class that I, I go through a video showing what all we need to know about the uh, cat skull anatomy. Um, and I'll make some other videos for each of these, for each of the uh, skulls. So let's start out just looking at the cat, getting oriented with it. Um, remember, this is the anterior side, the back is the posterior side, this is the dorsal, and this is the ventral. So we're going to take an anterior view first and just notice a couple of things. Number one, you notice the external nares. This is the, the large hole here. Inside this hole you can see the these bones that are very, uh, they look like little swirls and, and just like a labyrinth. These are the turbinate bones. These are what, when a cat breathes in or when any mammal breathes in, it helps to uh, increase the surface area of that air going through so it warms up the air and moistens it um, to help with, uh, to help fight against uh, external pathogens. This bone right here, this middle bone right here inside the nose is called the, the vomer. Okay, now looking at the, at the cat, we can also see where the incisors insert themselves is into the two premaxilla, premaxillae. All right, up here we have the nasal bones and you can see the, the sutures along the sides of those nasal bones. Okay, those are, are easily defined. Just lateral to the nasal bones are the maxillae. Okay, right down here we see the infraorbital foramen. Whenever you see foramina, okay, remember foramen is is singular, foramina are is plural. Foramina are areas where things like blood vessels and nerves go into and out of the skull. So this is where where uh, some large blood vessels are going into and, and out of the skull. Okay, the other thing from the the anterior view, view is the orbit. Okay, the orbit is where the eyes are. And you notice this is really large in cats. It's much smaller, relatively speaking, in humans because cats are nocturnal, humans are generally diurnal. Okay, let's take a look at a couple other things. I'm gonna kind of do a weird view here, not, not uh, lateral, not ventral, but not anterior, but anterior lateral. The first thing that you see here, you see a couple big holes in here. And this hole right here, that's the hole through which the uh, optic nerve travels and, and some blood vessels. So this is the optic foramen. This this hole right here is the optic foramen. This hole right here is the optic fissure. Now there's another little tiny hole at the very bottom. This is one of the foramina that I want you to know. You can barely see it right here. Okay, just ventral to the optic fissure. This is the foramen rotundum. Okay, let's take a look at some, some other things that we can see from this angle. You have the post-orbital processes. These two processes, post-orbital meaning behind the orbital, behind the orbit. Okay. If we look at the top of the skull and we go to a dorsal view, you see this large suture running right here. It's separating the two parietal bones. Excuse me, the two frontal bones. And inside the frontal bones, you would have a frontal sinus. Just posterior to the frontal bones are the two parietal bones, okay, left and right. Down off to the side, you can barely see it here, but there's a suture running here. This is the temporal bone. On either side is the temporal. Okay. Now let's take a look. Let's see if we got everything. I'm just going through my list here. Oh, this big thing right here. Okay. This is the zygomatic arch, and it's really large in carnivores because this is a site of, of a lot of muscle attachment for, uh, for chewing. Okay, let's take a look then at the, sorry about that, let's take a look then at the ventral view. Okay, and this is the, the same view that you're going to see in your, in your book. First off, we're going to see, again, just to orient ourselves, we see the the two post-orbital processes, there's one there and one there. Okay, we have the premaxilla, which is what the, the incisors are inserting into. Okay, this bone right here is the palatine. This is the palatine, and you can't see them right here, but there are some holes in here, and one is called the Po the posterior palatine foramen, it would be right here and right here. It's hard to see on some of these models. 
Okay, the other things that, that you're going to need to know are the mandibular fossa. This is this kind of depression right here on the, the uh, ventral side of this cat. Okay. Right here are the pterygoid, pterygoid bones, pterygoid like pterodactyl, P-T-E-R-Y-G-O-I-D, pterygoid. And these bones kind of stick up right here. These are the pterygoid processes, and this one's broken off on, on the cat's right side but you can still see it. Okay, these two large structures back here are the tympanic bullae. Tympanic bullae. And running into those are the external auditory meatus. And the plural for that is meatae, so the two external auditory meatae. Okay, let's look at some other bones here. This bone back here is the occipital and it runs up to here. Okay, this is the occipital. Just anterior to the occipital is the basi sphenoid and you can just see, you can just make out the sutures that define this basi sphenoid. Okay, and up here you can see this bone here that looks like a little tree, that's the, that's the pre-sphenoid. Okay, Right in here, just in the anterior part of the tympanic bulla is called the eustachian canal. It's a little tough to see on some of these models, but there should be a little uh, opening down here. It's a little bit bigger than a foramen, um, but it's called the it's called the uh, uh, eustachian canal. Here again uh, is the foramen oval. I believe I mentioned that in my first one. Maybe I didn't, but that's the foramen oval. Okay, and just to orient you, okay, here's the optic foramen, the optic fissure, the foramen rotundum, and then the foramen oval. So they kind of go in a, in a little line back there. Okay, let's take a look then at the lateral view. Again, just to, to orient ourselves, we have the post-orbital processes. These, these are a good way to, to orient yourselves uh, in, in each view of the skull. Okay, back here, right here, you have the mastoid process. Okay, if you feel behind your ear right now, and we did this in class, if you feel behind your ear, you can feel your mastoid process. Okay, cats have a very large tympanic bullae, and that's because they are uh, nocturnal, they need to hear very well. Okay, here is the temporal bone, and it's, it's kind of hard to see in here, but you can just get the rough outline. I always look for the sutures, but you can see the rough outline of the temporal bone. And this is the squamosal region of the temporal. Okay, it's also called the squamous portion or the squamosal bone, but it's actually part of the temporal bone in the cat. Okay, back here, you can just see the interparietal bone. Okay. Let, me, let me think if we needed anything else uh, on this. Oh, one of these, this is, this is a little bit tough to see. But right in here is another little bone called the lacrimal bone. It's right inside the orbit. Lacrimal is what is involved in crying or in tear ducts. And we have the nasolacrimal canal or nasolacrimal foramen, which is right down here. And that's through which your, uh, your tears would, would be shed. So when you're crying, you'll notice you sniff a lot. And that's because your uh, tears are going down through this nasolacrimal canal and into your nasal cavity. Okay, let's take a look inside the cat now at a couple of things, okay? So here's the, we're looking at the, the medial view, the sagittal view of the, uh, of the right side of the cat. So air would be coming in through here, and you notice all these bones in here. These are the turbinate bones, and these are the things that, that uh, turb turbinate the air. They make, it, um, they make it warm and moist. Okay, a couple things that you're gonna need to know one is this guy right here. This is called the cribiform plate. And right there is where uh, some of the nerves go back into the, to the brain. The brain obviously being in this, in this cavity here called the cerebral fossa. Um, what else we want to, oh, here's a, a good view of the pterygoid processes and the uh, tympanic bulla. Okay. Here's the occipital bone back here. And it would also come in underneath here. All right, 
So that's all we have for the, the cat skull. Let's take a look now at the cat uh, mandible. Okay, now what we're looking at here is a left side of the cat mandible. Okay, and the reason I know this is because of this mandibular symphysis right here, this rough part where the, the mandible has been uh, disarticulated. Articulated means uh, two bones are together. Disarticulated means that they are no longer together. So let's take a look at a medial view of this left cat mandible. The first thing you're going to notice is a big, that I want you to notice, is a, a large hole right here. Okay, you can see this hole. Okay, obviously for uh, blood vessels and nerves, these are the, this is the, the nerves that when you get a toothache and it hurts, this is the nerve that's, that's going to be affected. This is the mental foramen. Excuse, I'm sorry, excuse me, that is the man, that is the mandibular foramen. Okay, this large process here, and, and if we're looking at a, a cat skull, it's going to be hinging right on this joint here. This large process here is called the coronoid process, and just anterior, excuse me, just ventral to that is the condyloid process, this guy here. Okay, the ramus would be this large part here. The body is this part here. Okay, just to, to uh, orient you, this cat is a carnivore, so it has very sharp teeth. These, this is a molar tooth. Okay, these are the premolars. This is the canine. This is the incisors. Okay, now let's take a look. Oh, one more thing I want to show you. This little process right here is the angular process. So we have three processes on the on the cat uh, cat mandible. We have the coronoid process, the condyloid process, and the angular process. Okay, I'm going to switch this around. Now we're looking at the left side, a lateral view, not a medial view. We're looking at a lateral view. Okay, again, we have the, the three processes. We have the coronoid process, the condyloid process, and the angular process. Okay, this little hole right here and this little hole right here are both, this, both called the same thing. These are mental foramina. So one mental foramen, a second mental foramen. Okay, that's all we have for the cat. Enjoy and feel free to ask me any questions. If I left something out, which I hope I didn't, but if I did, feel free to ask me in class.